I was going to ask you uh, about your jewelry and stuff like that. How did you get started into that? And well, just, uh, I'll, it whatever you'd like I'll, to say. It, encapsulate it. Yeah. Um, when I was a very young boy, I used to watch my dad uh, make jewelry. And he, he created beautiful, beautiful things. And uh, I used to always literally ask other people what their parents did. And they'd tell me uh, yeah. and, uh, all manner of interesting things. Uh, I, on the other hand, I always thought, wow, that's cool. And then I'd see what my dad did, and I thought, well, that's cool too, only it has totally amazed me because of the quality of his work. And uh, he created gorgeous, beautiful jewelry. And I thought, well, it, it, it's nice, and, and there are, uh, as the Bible says, uh, uh, the church is made up of members, just like a, a human body, the body of Christ. Uh, every every portion of the uh, uh, body has a different function. Uh, the arms are different than the legs. The eyes are different than the ears. The same thing's true of humanity. In that, yes, there are people who are meant to govern. Yes, there are people who are meant to uh, uh, cook and serve and create some of the most best cuisine on earth. And there are others who create jewelry. And my dad happened to be in that uh, membership. And uh, when I started uh, wanting to make jewelry, he said, uh, you can watch, but you can't make any jewelry. <laughs> and uh, that went on for a couple of years. So then I realized I was five when I said, I want to do this. Yeah. Okay, by the time seven came around, I'd been watching quite a while. And he said, okay. He said, I'm going to give you a project. And I started out making rings. And he told me all the rudiments of uh, filing and also much like uh, what doctors have an oath, do no harm. He said, and all the things you create, make sure there's no sharp edges, uh, make sure there's no uh, points to it that can damage somebody, injure somebody, make it, make it well, make it right so it doesn't fall apart and injure somebody. And he showed me all the techniques necessary to do that. Okay, that's the craftsman portion of uh, the fundamentals, learning the techniques. And uh, there again, the craftsman portion of learning techniques is that you do it well. And when you do it well, it's uh, sturdy, durable, uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, appropriate for uh, whatever it might be. Okay, now the art comes into it. <clears throat> After learning the rudiments of uh, creating things, uh, he gave me different projects through the years. Uh, blossomed to the point where he said, I want you to make your own designs now. Start designing things. He always encouraged me to draw. And he always told me about the symbolism of what we were doing. And also the significance of why we did this for people. And that is to promote their understanding of their belief system. Whether it's a belief in themselves, their people, uh, their particular God or their lifestyle or their life way. So in that same sense, when you have all the different elements that a, a person actually is, uh, incorporates in their psyche, their being, their, their id, so when you have all that in, in their uh, 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 manner of uh, uh, trying to display this to the world, that's essentially what a person is doing when they're wearing a certain type of apparel or jewelry. So in that sense, uh, we try to serve our, our customers. We try to serve the people we work for. We listen to their input, what they tell us. Uh, we'll sit down and create some designs that might be appropriate. Uh, just like anything, each individual's interpretation of something is going to be different than another person, which is true of a flame and people sitting around that flame. At any given instance, you can say to each one of them, I'm going to ask you what that flame looked like. Just right at this time, right now, describe it. We'll all turn away. Every one of us can describe a different flame. The same thing's true of all of nature. Us as humanity, when we look at something, we interpret all things different. Uh, some people might be colorblind, so they look at something and say, well, that's a, a series of grays. Another person might look at it and it's a series of crimsons. So when you have that, you have people and their interpretations, the same thing of music. 
Some people might have a fine ear for determining the different levels and vocalisms. Other person might have uh, no ear whatsoever. It all sounds like, the same to me. Give me, give me volume. You know, yeah. I need, I need stomp. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so, in that same sense, the artist is going to create things different than anybody else. My yeah. father marched with the correct drummer in creating the works that he had. I was fortunate enough to have him encourage me and help me with uh, <clears throat> the fundamentals, the techniques, the ideas, and the interpretive quality of understanding what people wanted to have done, and giving people options, uh, saying we can do this, 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 or this. This is the many different ways you can do things. That also applies to finances. You can <clears throat> make an item whatever's appropriate to their pocketbook. In other words, if uh, they don't have a big fat pocketbook, you can make something that they'll be happy with that will be appropriate like for them. Whereas someone who has a high amount, you can take your time to develop whatever they wish. Uh, work of art. Yeah. So, that's where that all came about. Uh, learning to design things, getting involved in it. Uh, one of the big catalysts to that was even as a small child being able to buy my own school clothes, TVs, rifles, uh, cars. Uh, telling a story that happened when I was uh, 14 and a half years old. I took my bicycle, rode around, I went to a used car lot, bought a 55 Pontiac for $95. Wow. And uh, put my bicycle on a trunk, which I parked around the corner in the alley. Uh, the car dealer and the salesman were worthless and uh, well, I didn't say worthless because I love it because they sold me a car, but they were unscrupulous. All I had to do was sign the pink slip and it was my car. So I walked around there and of course country folks, you drove things. You know, I drove a tractor, drove cars, things like that when I was a little bitty baby. So when you get in the real world, it's nothing to drive a car. So you go over there, test drive it, it's good, 95 bucks, it's good. Of course, gas was like 15 <laughs> cents and 20 time. cents a gallon. You but getting time. that car, <laughs> driving around all afternoon yeah. on yeah. like $5 worth of gas, yeah. which is a full tank, and then taking it home and have the box keys box taken away, you know, <laughs> and a whole another year, because <laughs> 14 and a half, and I was able to get at least a learner's <laughs> permit. Then they let me drive around, <laughs> you know, but even then I shouldn't yeah, have been. I, I but, wore it out. So, yeah. uh, that, the uh, financial but rewards of working for yourself, uh, yeah. uh, the idea that uh, how you spend your time, that you can spend your time creating things that people go, ooh, ah, oh, wow, that's great, I'll give you money for it. And then being in a situation where you can create that as much as you want. My father also said that you as a human being have no excuse for being hungry. You have no excuse for being without a roof. You have no excuse for having beautiful women around you. So you got money, you can buy any, anything you need, and he said, and beautiful women like beautiful things. And what you got to do is you buy them pretty things, they'll come follow you anywhere. Shazam, it works. <laughs> Next question. Okay, uh, noticed your POW MIA bracelet. Yep, that's I'm Largent Gorley, shot down in 1960. I was been kind of fascinated here recently with jewelry being worn by troops in Vietnam. Uh, you were in Vietnam, so never went. You never went. I was the era, and I was too young. Yeah. And during the, the time that uh, I joined up, they were drawing down. Yeah, okay. And so when they were drawing down, well, they weren't sending anybody else over there. And then uh, Saigon happened. Yeah. And Shazam, we're totally out of the war business. Well, that answers that. <laughs> I kind of like creating stuff too, uh, just all sorts of things. It's, it's There's all no limits. Yeah. There is an artist, whether it's musical, uh, uh, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. Uh, uh, there's no limit to art. And uh, even when you get into mathematics, there's yeah. art in mathematics. There's, uh, and I love math. Uh, there's art in the, the pen. You can sit down and create all manner of wonderful stories of heartbreak, goodness, joy, happiness, love, uh, hatred, anguish, uh, everything. You can touch the whole world. There's art and everything. Inside every person lurks an artist. And sometimes it just takes the, uh, the person the opportunity to find that. Find the media that they can exactly. work through. Search and taste everything. Yeah. Find out what's out there. Uh, my father used to always say, uh, get married early, marry frequently. 
until you get it right. <laughs> so once you get it right, hey, good deal. You know, you have a lot of experiences and uh, you learn from experience.